Why do you think there's no authority to, to like, I mean, why do you think some people in, the, in our society have, are treated different? Is that fair? What? Is what fair? That some people in our society aren't held to the same laws that other people are? Well, you know, and I what, what, yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. Are held to the same exactly. Laws. Exactly. Okay. So this, this is why this is going on. There's no right. government official that held to the same law. There is a very clear understanding that was made to myself and several others. This is not the first time that I have filed charges against West John and Chris Morikawa. I got the same turnaround around that I got today previously, that they would look into it and that they would start an investigation. This has been going on for months. It culminated in clear theft. When we have officers of the law who are saying on camera that we in fact saw you remove the item, they know exactly where those items went, and yet still choose to let BFM steal from us, a very clear line was drawn today. Before it was abstract, it was my word or somebody else's word against Trish and West. And I can understand that, and there is some ambiguity to those other charges. One, because it, it turned into what he said, you know, she said kind of, kind of deal. But, after the action was done, we confronted Sergeant Tonto again about it. Because, if you remember from the break, we kept telling him, you guys know that those items were removed. You saw them, you saw them saw, seeing yes. you removing the items? He verified item. on camera the car, the location of the car, the color of the car, and everything that you would need to know to establish clearly that the items that were tagged the day before were in fact removed from the camp. Hmm. He confirmed this on camera. An officer of the law who half an hour beforehand was watching DSM commit crimes. Was it was he affirming that he saw the the items that he was taking or the no, items no, he or the items the that items that were tagged yesterday being walked across the car and placed into a car. Oh, and yeah, a lot of the items that were tagged yesterday were yes, put in the car. They, he clearly saw that. So he how does he know that we didn't do that with all the items? You know what I mean? How does he know that all the well, items haven't been in a private that. place? You know, we've been here for two hundred and seventy some days and we haven't changed our tactics once. Why? Because we are aware of what uh, ordinance 11-029 states, yeah. that the property must be removed. Yeah, and to a private place, out. and we do. And we do that. They know full well that we have a support network that consists of storage units and vehicles to be able to yeah. remove these items. And we are, we are resisting this law because it, it takes away... Okay. Fundamental human okay. rights, right? I, I love the chat, what, what happened? What are you, what are you doing? What happened? Oh, someone yeah, assaulted yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Are you ready to assault them? Yeah. 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 
a what? Oh, okay, please. I could only speak to what I saw recorded, so okay. I, I wasn't yeah, here for the. You weren't here at the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was right next. He said that, that's you on the video. Yeah. It's things are I'm not sure if I did, but I saw it. I didn't get that. I'm so sorry. This is not the style of your CCTV and doing interviews. Okay. Um, the other option is if you want to do a written statement. It's up to you. Whatever you feel more comfortable doing. I just think I said that. I know you can read my hand. <laughs> I know my, mine was a little janky because every time we brought the clipboard in, it was setting up the code detector. I see. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so you guys are gonna send. Okay, I'm gonna try and pull out the video for you. Yeah. Is there any other recording? Is there any other recording? Uh, no, but we found there. Oh, so the only recording is that camera right there? And then, uh, apparently that your, is, that, is that your camera? Okay. In, in there because, we'll, we'll check on that. Yeah, the officer, um, he, he stepped over, like, right there, and then almost immediately another officer we'll, we'll, came out. We'll take your statement. Okay, okay. okay. The thing is, before we put it in the room, we have to go back to the metal detector. Okay, no worries. So, so I feel like leave this too. So, so will I be allowed to bring my camera in? Stamp is 1803. So he's going to go do a recorded interview, so I'm going to need to move out for a moment so I can let him through. Officer? Oh, I just wanted to let him know I was going to go move, so it's going to beep so that he had a heads up that it was going to beep. Yeah, I, they need me to because they're going to have Andy come through. I just wanted to give you a heads up, it's going to beep but I'm also going to clear out stuff out of my pocket so that won't happen anymore. You, you were upset because I was moving and it was beeping. So I was giving you the heads up that that's what was going on. Do you need help? No. Okay. And Sugar comes out of the cancer machine, unscathed it appears. But that's all that it, it, it just appears. Does Sugar want the thing back? No. Do you want your technology back? Don't mind. 
Whose technology is this? Oh, god damn it. Okay. I hate technology. Okay. I will go back in. I'll go back in once he is done. Hi, live stream world again. So I'm about to go and make sure that I have nothing metal in my pockets so that when I go and sit back down, that that will be no longer an issue for said officer who is being annoyed by the beep. You know, I'm kind of annoyed about having to change out tents all the time and haul stuff to work. By the way, it's one of the things that they claimed or were claiming was still in the tents and being stored. Look at that. Those would be my tent and Andy's tent. They went to work with me. They went to work with me today, along with all of this stuff in my bag. Throw bag. And a bunch of stuff that I put into storage uh, today, earlier this morning. Because that's kind of how we roll, yo. Because we know what's up. And the city can continuously lie and bullshit. And really all it is is suppression attempts. We all know how this bullshit works. We understand it is crap. Um, so I hope this is at least a little entertaining for you. Excuse my weird angles. I'm working on putting stuff in my bag uh, that is metal issues. Um, so, you know, we, uh, oh, hang on. Mm. Hope that was entertaining. So, I'm going to go have a cigarette. I'm going to bring you guys with me. Um, so you and me are all going to have a little chat. What? We're waiting for you to go through. Before we, oh, Sam's back in. Okay. No, that's probably a little more entertaining than watching me have a cigarette and listen to me talk, because I'll come back in and I'll sit, and then I'll talk at you, because hopefully somebody will, you know, be interested in putting me back on camera. Well, Maddie, if you want to hold that. Don't put me on camera. <laughs> no. Hey, live stream world. Right, We're still here. Privileges? What's up? Oh, God. How's the cancer machine? Cancer, cancer. Sexy cancer machine. Not as sexy as the TSA cancer machine. No, not nearly. Yeah. Well, this one can't see through your clothes, so, you know. I wish I were getting sneaky through the other I mean, it's... Is that me saying it off? No, that's coming from somewhere over there. It'd be much louder if it was this. And there's a little green man. If it was this one, it'd be blinking red. Red man. Stop them. Stop them from red means stop. I really wish there was a press. Press? Press? Yes. Press behind this. I think it would be so appropriate. Press. Press. Best Occupy. There is no other Occupy but press. But press. Yeah, press. press is the best. It's a nice mural they have back there. Kinda of sad that you have to like walk through a metal detector and pass that guy over there to see it. It's okay. I mean, it's in the cop shop. How good can be? That's true. That's kind of neat. You're kind of wait a minute. Wait. That's a compliment. You can't be doing that. No, I'm not neat at all. We're not yeah. friends or anything. No. No. Okay. Yeah. But if you would say, I'm moving away from my Mac, so that I can go to PC, I would, we would have to have work assigned to it. Wrong work. Yeah. Yeah. That's not something to do with the action. Classy. <laughs> it's okay. He's on his way in to make a police statement. We can forgive him. You know, talking about the fucking Mac. Use traverse. How do I know how many people are watching? Mm-hmm. Oh, 17. Oh, hi, 17 people on YouTube. What's up? I don't think anyone said anything. If you guys have any questions about what's going on here, you can like answer. How do you like request? You can do a dance. <laughs> Well, you do work for clowns, so... 
So how should we make it easier for others to join us? You know, like... All they have to do is come down to Thomas Square, very general assumption, do not bombs, or any other time, really, to say, hey, what's going on, son? I don't think it really gets my head. It's really true. But, I mean, <coughs> like, people don't want to sacrifice, you know? They don't want to make the sacrifice of taking the time off. Well, they already make the sacrifice. They make the sacrifice in their taxes. They don't get to decide Sunday. where they go. They get to, yeah. you know, they have to make the sacrifices in the laws that they have to follow that they have no say in. They make sacrifices every day. That's true. The one percent make the sacrifice that hard already, but make a sacrifice even harder. But if you want to make, if you want to make them accountable. There's always Sunday. 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 The fuck works on Sunday. Yes, people doing non. Violent actions like this got us free time on Sunday for a lot of people. We, we, we not allowed to work people 24 hours a day. Um, or no? Yeah, I mean, like, come back after work. So, like, just shoot the shit with us. So, we're not that scary. I mean, I can't, I can only see. Sam's that scary. I am that scary. Sam is that scary. Don't Sorry. go to Sam. Sam's a creeper. But she's moral enough to. I'm not Fair enough. I'm not even when people she. are abused. I'm not or he. even. She. Yes, Sam's a Sam. Yeah, he knows a lot about Sam. Sam knows. Sam knows what Sam knows, and Sam knows that you don't uh. need pronouns in a sentence in order to make a sentence work. Right. So you can just use Sam in place of any pronoun. Oh. Any pronoun. pronoun to me. Or anyone. Just. All Sam. All Sam. All Sam. Sam. <laughs> Everything would be so much more fucked up. Everything <laughs> Sam. Uh, uh. It just shows how sensitive Sam is to people's dignity and people's uh, no, rights. Not. You know what I mean? Oh, right to. You're <laughs> being really flattering to me right now. This went to its place. Yeah. Well, it's plenty process. Process. But you know, having that knowledge says to me that you care enough to keep that ball to people. You know what I mean? That, that the faulty that puts he and she offend some people. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not that it offends them necessarily, I think. I think it's just that that's not what they are, and so they don't like being addressed as something yeah. that they aren't. Yeah. Because that's shit. Makes them uncomfortable, yeah. I'm going to start calling you Craig from now on. Yeah. Your name is Craig. Yeah. You are yeah. pronoun Craig. And Yay! Gender issues. One of the many topics of Occupy HPD this evening. Yay. Do you want to man the camera again? You yeah, probably have yeah. steadier hands than me. You look much better. Uh, I think I look a lot better behind the camera. In other words, gone. That's my most I'm sorry, I think that's what I'm saying. Hi there. Hi. Hey. 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 Doing a case interview about the assault that took place. So I gotta go into the belly of the beast, so to speak. About the what? This is about the assault? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think my shoes are gonna set it off. Should I take them off or? Try it, man. Just walk through real quick. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Did you want to see them? I watch it, man. I got it. Yeah. All right. Just take it with the rusted bag, so it's only one place that everybody has to worry about. But yes, no problem. Why are you going in? Just go. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so what's happening is... Okay. We're just taking a couple people at a time doing an interview about the assault that happened here at the metal detector as we do our protest. Oh, look at her. <laughs> awesome. So now, you, now that you're sitting there, that means the discussion time is with you. What do you have to say? What do I have to say? Yeah. Well, let's see. Um, let's start out with stealing is wrong. I think that that's a pretty basic concept that we can probably all agree on. I mean, you could argue about, like, stealing a loaf of bread to steal you, or to, like, save your starving family or whatever, but I kind of guarantee that Wes and Trish don't have a starving family to feed. Um, I'm pretty sure that we can confirm that with census information. So I don't really see that as falling within basically the, the category of stealing that anyone would consider to be okay. So uh, especially because they're stealing from the people who would have to steal to feed their starving family. So um, you've got people who have plenty um, and the way the way the Bill 54 works is they tag something and then 24 hours later they can take it away if it's still there. Um, today they took things that weren't tagged um, and uh, so obviously that's just, you know, straight up stealing. Um, and they're not only just stealing and, uh, you know, like putting jeers the ants on their little food that Yeah, yeah, the whole system's kind of screwed up right now. So are you willing to be arrested for that? 
Hmm? Are you willing to, you're willing to take this chance to be arrested? Yes. I like seeing that solidarity between everyone. And that's not even a requirement, I mean, because that's a huge thing to do, you know what I mean? It's not like that should be like the norm. Yeah. It shouldn't. It should, no one should ever have to get arrested. To yeah, no one should have to be arrested. No one should have to sit on the street. Well, no one should have to, you know, go through these things that, that you know, people go through every day. No one, no one should, should have to. You should never have to get arrested for someone else's problem. You know, it's just a powerful person that, you know. No one should have to be arrested for their protection. Yeah. Like, well, people are getting arrested for doing what's right. Yeah, getting yeah, the right thing. In the face of people that are more powerful than them, that are breaking laws, yeah. that are destroying the world that we live in. Like, have you ever um, read anything about like, Martin Luther King? I and mean, have you seen what is that? Like, yeah. See, we're kind of in solidarity with them, aren't they? Aren't we? Because they had to do the same thing. They, had, they were the same thing. They had to make these horrible sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Do better for the rest of the people. You know, you know putting they their like, necks on the line. Yeah, they got to run through this. Just like this. It's the way they may change. Because, uh, and you know, people will say like, oh, well, you know, you're breaking law, so that's not okay. Um, it was also illegal at one time for black people to drink from the same water fountain just because the law doesn't make it right, you know, that's like, true, like so if, if someone is using that logic to counter what we're doing today, like, well, this is, you know, against the law, which, by the way, we're not breaking any laws, like, we're not even doing that, but if we were, that logic doesn't hold any water either because there are despicable laws all the time that, you know, doesn't make it right just because it's written into legislation. Yeah. Well, I don't want to. I want to take in a publicly thank uh, Rise PDX. Um, he's found out that we can actually we actually had three hours worth of our recording saved, so we lost only one hour. And but that one hour is retrieved from. Uh, let me go back here. I want to make sure I get the right right people. Um, the last hour was. Saved by OWNN, Global Rev, and Occupy P Town. All three of them have that last hour, so we have all four hours combined between everybody. Wow. And yes, so everything is recorded. So now we just got to figure out how to retrieve it all and get everything out there. Dropbox. Yep, Dropbox, or uh, we could just uh, post it on my freaking Facebook. I don't care. I mean, whatever. Um, we also have uh, Honolulu Doug, that is. Uh, he has reports and photos of today's uh, Heil Carlisle raid up on disappearnews.com and uh, dugnote.com uh, also. And then uh, we have uh, Luella that's given props to, props and mahalos to Daniel oh. and the rest of the occupiers. We have uh, also video of Trish stealing the tent up at the... Yeah, okay, so we have video of Trish stealing the tent on uh, the YT Doug YouTube channel okay. titled Trish Morikawa Steals a Tent. <laughs> so that's already up and uh, functional. And then we have to, we have a solidarity and thank you from uh, Trixie79 to Sugar for uh, her work with uh, the clinic actions out in Chicago. So yeah, we have a lot of people that's uh, responding and signing in. And yes, it's a, it's a good time. Yeah, well, everybody's everybody's working to get everything out there as much as possible and retweeting and sharing this and doing whatever. So it's it's hitting nationwide and uh, hitting very various different news you know channels. And this uh, what we're seeing right now is courtesy of Nova and his his uh, skills on the on the camera and the networking. Which I lack, but <laughs> I really appreciate. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Revolutionnova.com. No. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Anyhow, but that. Yeah. Huh? It's U Street. Yeah, it's U Street. Uh, the Pineapple Glitch. Yes. <laughs> but anyhow. 
Yeah, I, I'm really liking the solidarity that I'm seeing just within our own group. I mean, we've had uh, previous struggles, and this is uh, proving to show that even with those struggles, we're still we're still together. We still have, you know, we're yeah, still trying. We have our cultural ideological differences, but it shows that we, it's like, just like the rest of us said, we are more common, but we all like, there's something that unites us in the sense of right that we all share. Yep. And uh, I'm not even going any further than that because then we might start disagreeing. Or, but <laughs> we, we can agree on this. We agree where the line is drawn and where we have to do. And luckily, there's those who have done it before us and we have not alone. And it looks like there's a lot of viewers out there. Oh, yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, uh, both the social streamline and the chat lines are uh, blowing up. Well, I'm <laughs> glad that people care. And I feel the same way as well. Yep. I believe uh, Damien is on his way out here too, so he should be here soon too. So, yeah, it'd be good to get some more uh, support. Uh, we also want to thank uh, Sam Mitchell for bringing the pizzas. And uh, we have uh, Michael, and I'm not sure who else was involved with it, but Michael and, and you, I believe, right? Uh, on bringing the meals here. and. Oh, no, I just applied uh, Andy with nectar. Oh, Andy with nectar. Uh, that would be the Mountain Dew. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yep. Dad, because it's primarily Mountain Dew. But we can forgive him tonight because we got a head slam into a metal detector. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Radioactive plastic machine. That's great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, radiation. <laughs> the best. <laughs> Not at all old or like structurally unsound or like you get any radiation on me at all. Oh, like just radio waves, you know. I mean, <laughs> and, you know. we project the same waves as in a microwave but without the screening. It's not like I don't keep my head in a microwave every day anyway. It's part of my daily routine, you know. I know we all do, right? Yeah, right. This yeah. Is a lower dose of that. Every time we walk down underneath power lines, mm -hmm. uh, you know, walk through these things. Well, we uh, are in Hawaii, so every time we have to go through the full body scanners at the, the airport. Yeah, you know, and then you got just walking by some of the nuclear armament that's all over our island. Oh, yeah, certainly. Yeah. Then we got the the, the leaks that's happening from Fukushima. Right, and those radioactive clouds that come by every once in a while. Yeah. Those are super so, cool. yeah. Hawaii is great if you want to get radioactive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it makes people feel alienated and powerless because the only way you can bring something to notice is by doing an action like this where society totally alienated us. You know, if we get arrested then you can't get a job. It's a huge sacrifice to make And this and this evening alone, like even within the civilian community we already had a guy bullying Daniel, you know, like this guy was like coming up here and it's like we need to decide like what we what we think as a citizenship, like as a people, what what do we agree on in terms of our ideals? Uh, and I know that we'll never agree on everything, obviously, in this time to get, but to have us out here, you know, fighting for the health of the community in Honolulu, just greater justice in general of the 99%, and then to have a civilian who is in within that demographic, he, he's within the 99% easily. Come in here and start yelling at us. I don't know. It, it, it just feels sort of like uh, you know you're you, you're part of this and you don't even know it. You know you're you're part of this greater oppressed demographic and, and you don't even know that. I mean, maybe you do, but you're in denial about it or you just don't want to think about it. You don't want to think about the injustices that are being done to well, that every could be day. Done. Yeah, that could be done to you. If these trends continue. Yeah, exactly. You know, if these guys can make up whatever rules they want on the spot, you know, today, then what other rules are they going to make up on the spot as long as we, you know, keep them unchecked? As long as we allow, yeah. you know, as long as we as citizens allow the, those who have whatever authority means who have it, if we just allow them to remain unchecked in these injustices, then, you know, that's going to be a thing that becomes quite commonplace for them, and it's going to become comfortable to make up rules as they go along. We've seen that already at Tom
on the square, you know. They just make up rules as they go along when they feel like it. You know, we see that on the streets all the time. And uh, as long as we are complacent with that, and if we comply with that, and allow that, and we don't fight back against that, it's, it's not going to get better. It's, it's going to continue to get worse. The rules will continue to be bent and broken in more extreme ways once they get more comfortable with the idea of so. Why do we have to keep it in check? And it's not fun, and it's not comfortable. No one likes no one likes to feel like they're on the losing side of the battle. No one likes to feel like, you know, they're making people like unhappy or inconvenient. So like that gentleman earlier this evening, you know? He like clearly the the officers were giving him permission to go like this way around the metal detector and the officers gave him verbal permission. Oh, you can go around and he's like, No, I wanna go this way. Mm-hmm. Like you could go that way or you could fight a giant ideological battle that like I, I just the implications of that are what bothers them. I'm sitting here holding a sign. In terms of the mechanical world, this is not impressive. You know, this is cardboard. This is, you know, plastic. Like, this is not an impressive scene, but... But you see the offense that people put to it because it's out of the norm, right? I mean, he came up here, he'd seen that, and he made a decision, a conscious decision, that I'm going to attack whatever's in my way. When I, I can easily go around and let them do whatever yeah, they want if they disagree or agree. I mean, it was, it was kind of blah, like, dude, chill well, out that, That's but just so frustrating is that the only way to make, to, to, for someone to be accountable to save society, you know, is to pit these two people together. But he didn't do anything to deserve that. He didn't right. deserve someone in his way. Right. But it is really those who try to cheat the system, and try to be better than everyone else that is causing everyone else to suffer. It sort of forced that interaction to happen, and it's sort of like a, a diversion almost. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, let's forget about this giant ideological battle for a minute and just have a petty squabble. You know, it's like, yeah. like let's let's make the people fight amongst themselves. Let's divide them. Let's polarize them. Yeah. So they'll be a little bit too busy to realize the greater issue. Like, yeah. this is a giant ideological yeah. statement. What, yeah, like, what you're saying is, what's hurting him more? Me being in the way? Because you were seeing, like, you were like, I couldn't believe that he was getting so mad over me. Yeah, it's way. like two feet that yeah. way. And an officer of the law was giving you verbal permission to go that way. There was yeah. nothing stopping him. But you realize the danger, right? That's why you seem so small to you. To him, it's a big deal. Because yeah. it's the principle of the thing, too. Like, he has to move to someone else. But right. he doesn't realize that. The no one doing this to him, it is not real. I know. The only reason I'm doing that, the only reason I feel justified in doing that, is because I know it's nothing compared to what is happening or what will happen if we continue to let some people break the law right, or exactly. pass laws that are just. And metaphorical people holding signs in his way are much larger than you holding a sign in his way, you know? Like, like you're holding a sign, a cardboard sign in his way, Hello? but the U.S. government is holding a much bigger okay. cardboard sign okay. in his way, you know, that will. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. much, much greater problems than like a 10 second detour around the metal detector ever well. Right. <laughs> but that's what we face. I mean, even when they're part of the 99%, they just don't understand. Right. People, people have that front that they th- feel they have to be aggressive in whatever they do in their lives. They have to have this competition. Yeah. And, and what does it describe? The, our crony capitalism. You know, it's not even true capitalism. It's a corporate thing. You know, it's competition. Be, uh-huh. be the best. Beat the little man down. Do this. Do that. You know, it's like, culture. right? Culture. Yeah. Culture. There's nothing wrong with competition, but there's healthy competition, right. and then there's. Yeah, I, I didn't mean any competition. Obviously, competition can be healthy. Right. Right. Straight up aggression. Exactly. Like these two men did not know each other, have never met each other, they don't have any grudges against any of each other, but they're like, you know, right. this guy was aggressive. Exactly. It wasn't necessary. Like, he, was, he, he wasn't even nice about it. Like, he was like, oh. Yep. But, no. He wasn't reasonable from the beginning. Like, right. the very first thing, like, all right, I'm tired of this earth. Like, 
Yeah, you know, all they had to do is just step a couple feet over. I do have to give props for HPD and how they handled it and made him go around and not yeah. us. It shows that they have somewhat of an understanding. I don't want to give them too much credit, but at the same time, it shows no, a little bit. He, he didn't say something to the officer, something along the lines of, you know, like, it'll, it'll be, like, shorter for you if you go around this way. Like, yep. Which is, which is totally cool. Like I said, I don't have time for this. It's like, oh, okay, well, it'll be much faster if you go that way. Then. Right. Good point, sir. You should probably yeah. go that way. You see, you've seen the front that was happening. If you're in such a hurry, this is not going to be the fastest way to get through yeah. here. Yeah, he's one man uh, with a whole mess of others standing around that's trying to just sit here, be peaceful, make us make us stand on, uh, making sure those that are doing wrong is brought to justice. Yeah. And he's all just wanting to start more injustice. <laughs> I think we should start popping tents up out on the sidewalk here too. I know. Yeah. You know, if they're gonna make us sweat it out all night, okay, fine. Then we pop tents. Yeah. I mean, it's not like they didn't like take everything today. Right. So, well, yeah. Well, we proved to them that we weren't storing everything that they thought we were storing. Yeah. I mean, so we still have our other means. <laughs> They broke the law. They they went on a whim, thinking and praying that they were going to catch us here when they already tried it once before and found out it was wrong. Yeah. You know, and so they tried it a second time, and guess what? <laughs> it's yeah. wrong again. Yeah. We are definitely professionals at being uh, the occupiers in Honolulu. Professionals at acquiescing their laws, their right. their their legislation that we follow, like even though we should. They're mad that we do. They're mad that, that we follow the laws that they made up. Those silly laws that are really, really completely destructive, that, like in a societal sense, just horribly destructive laws that are absolutely despicable, and yet we follow them, and that makes them mad. <laughs> that we seem to follow them so gracefully. And so what they have to do is they have to just make an example of us. Like, oh, and they, you know, they can't win because we're still there, and yet we're following all of their laws. No, they make an example of us, but the example shows that we're still bigger than them. Right, exactly. They try to make an example of us, but there hasn't been a giant raid like that where tents have to pop right back up again. Like, it's not again. <laughs> and it's all well within the legislation that they have written, which makes them even angrier. So, no, I mean, they're barking up the wrong tree. Maybe if they stopped and actually had real discussion. We would get somewhere instead of just going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth if we actually stopped 200 days ago and had some real meaningful discussion on why we're there. Right. You know, why Miss Bill 54 is the worst. Why it's totally constructive for a health community in on Oahu and, you know, the island economy and just all of these greater implications. If we had that discussion, it would be a much yeah, well, $750,000 later, they find out we're still here, and they're yeah. still fighting, and have accomplished nothing. Exactly. And they, they look at us and say that we have accomplished nothing. No, we've actually guided a lot of people in the same means that believe that, hey, maybe there's a point, but it's still the top dogs that still want to keep up that fight, and it brings all these other entities like HPD and everybody, but they're using them as uh, pawns to fight their fight. You know, it's because they're too above. They don't want to have to deal with it. Oh, just go bulldoze through. Do this, do that. Do it, do it, and do it after dark. So not only can you see and they're not allowed to enter the park to stop you, but we also see double. So all of the men that are there, all the men and women that are there, that are, are being paid by the city to destroy things that they really have no right to destroy, especially the stuff with uh, express content on it, which is not legal for them to destroy. They do it in the cover of night, and they have to pay everyone double to do it. Which, like, taxpayer money, hooray! Like, 
Yeah. Well, just just the mere fact that we also had the ninth district national. Democratic Party on both city, city, county, state, and I'm the secretary for the state of Hawaii. Yes. <laughs> the 28th district. <laughs> and remove that. If it was anybody else, it would be arrested immediately. Arrested immediately. And the police and Sergeant Santos, who is an officer of the law, saw it take place. So I don't, you know, and I've been down here before filing reports and got things kind of run around about how. Um, they need to go through the proper panel investigation and blah 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 or whatever. But at the end of the day, um, oh, the, uh, yeah, it's you. <laughs> I'm the worst. I must be. I'm the worst. 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 I'm the Watch out, they're making them walk through again. Okay. Here's a cause you know what I'm gonna do. Well, you know, that's, a, that's an interesting topic that you bring that up, that you knowingly subject your citizens to radiation. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why you brought that up, because that just... Wow, the implications of knowingly subjecting people with radiation. That does make sense. Yeah, yeah. All metal detectors are like that. That's okay. That, that's a great society when we just radiate people because, well, that's okay. <laughs> I don't know, Fukushima. We have uh, the guy, the, the main, or one of the main people, I guess, uh, Global Revolution Live. Okay. He has the, the an hour and a half worth of the last video archived. Oh, right on. And so I need you to get a hold of Doug and... Uh, Oren's been calling me. Okay, so, so call Oren and have him uh, so he can jump on there to grab that information. He's going to tweet it to Occupy Honolulu. And uh, I believe... He, he gave me some information here on how to retrieve it from him, so uh, as soon as you get him on the line, I'll give you that information. Okay. So basically, between everything, we didn't lose any video. I mean, if anything, we've maybe lost a couple minutes, but we got the majority of everything. It's Warren, freaking awesome. Warren's phone is busy right now. Well, then get a hold of Doug. Did you figure it out? Let me try and call that. Oh, did my laptop just slide off? Red cancer paint? <laughs> yeah, oh, her red paint that just like ended up everywhere for no apparent reason. All over my stuff. All right. Yeah. It's, it's the red cancer paint. It's the red cancer paint. Hail all red cancer paint. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Trixie 79. Was it in reference to NATO? Uh, so, uh, I think it has to do with that clinic operation thing you were involved with. Oh, right. <laughs> Doug's not answering and Oren's phone is busy. I'll try him in a few minutes. Woohoo! Another piece. <laughs> awesome deal. Did you want. I know you're all like. No, I can't. Okay. Oh! 
Um, yeah, I was in a police room doing an interview because of the assault. Are you talking to Orin? Yeah. Orin, you're live. Yeah. Okay, so, hey. Okay. So, okay. Global Revolution has got an hour and a half. Okay. Oh, okay. He, he was listening to you tell me about it. He's watching the, the live stream. Okay, so, uh... Okay. Well, here's the information behind it. It would be, uh, and for all you that's uh, listening, I mean, okay. th these so guys you are know great. That you need to get a hold of Global and get that video. Okay, right? it's at. Is he listening? Is it Andy? Come on, so I can get this done real quick. At, hold on, man. At uh, hold on, Warren. I got two different people talking to me. Yeah, well, talking. tell them to pay attention. Global. It's at Global Rev R E V Live. At Global Rev Live. Right. He's also going to try and post it at Occupy Honolulu. It's on the Twitter get page. A, get a hold of them. They have an hour and a half of video. They made a link on Twitter. They, they made a link on Twitter. Okay. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> well, um, there are other We'll, we'll talk about this later, Warren. I gotta go, okay? <laughs> Nova's light? You stream isn't mm -hmm. recording right now? Oh, overall, let's see what that means. Yeah. Uh, oh, where am I going? Okay. All right. Hey, well, we'll what figure do you mean? Okay. Uh, what happened? All right. Uh, the new fire on 1 o'clock. Uh, Department of Facility Maintenance, uh, Trish Moore Powell, which is uh, in charge of housing for the houses, uh, HPD, you know, they all came up. What did they do? Uh, they decided to act the second part of the raid. Uh, first they have a tagging raid, and then they have a confiscation raid. The confiscation raid is when they believe that an item has been there for over 24 hours after being tagged, that they have the right to take it under... Uh, it's called 11-029, the Bill 54 you know, ordinance. Well, they watched us take all the items, walk across Thomas Square, right by them, and place it in a car. Some of it's in storage, some of it's in the car. We removed all the items, and we placed up new items. They watched us do it. They have, you know, uh, they have uh, prior knowledge, I guess you would say, before they started to do the raid that nothing that was there was tagged and that nothing has been there for over 24 hours. It was just placed there and they came in and removed the stuff anyways. Uh, with that, uh, we decided to, uh, uh, me and Andy came down here for an action against, against uh, Trish Murakawa and uh, 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 for that. Because they, they had actual prior knowledge. Now on our video, we have actual video of Sergeant Santos, one of the people that was in charge of uh, the HPD members that was there to make sure that they were in line, keeping the peace and all that. He even admitted that he watched us remove the items, place them in the car, and that those items that was there was not part of what was actually tagged. And he allowed them to break the law. City official, cabinet member, uh, you know, members actually break the law and steal the stuff. Um, they also took uh, some medication, which we had to fight over and over again from uh, a house individual, and we were able to get that retreat back to them. Um, but that's, yeah, that's basically it. What about the altercation? With? Uh, she said oh, uh, we had another HPD officer that decided to walk through. We have, we're doing a national, we're blocking the digital sway here. And, uh, 
Andrew was sitting there within that uh, uh, metal detector, and uh, an HPD officer decided to barrel on through him in his sign, which had left his uh, so, you know, when there's clearly the the when there's clearly room to go around you know, around that, he decided that he wanted to take the offensive and commit, just like we've been talking about, instead of taking the easy route or taking the nice route, that he rather would just be violent in the way he does his operations. You know, he this officer knew that we had uh, the right to be here. He knows that HPD is definitely on top of why we're here, and it's allowing us to be here because. It's most of them actually understand why we're here, but he decided, out of his own personal self, to take an offensive action by barreling through, knocking him into the entrance, and set into an entrance tray, and um, he should be used for that. And they actually called an ambulance about yeah. it. Christopher D. Do we have a link set up with the video clip yet of the assault? Yep. Which port is that? Uh, for Mikiki to the top of the table. Do you have an email or anything? Would you like to actually see the video of the assault? Uh, yeah. Sure. We do. We actually have it right here if you got like a USB thumb drive or I will not leave this building 
until uh, Church Forward Tower and West Lakeshore are arrested for theft. Yeah, we got tents over here. It's hiding under the people. We have a rotation system. Stuff goes into when we get tagged, everything gets removed. What time did you move your stuff out? Uh, people people do it at different times. About 12:30ish. And then you brought it back right after 12:30. Yeah. You moved your original yeah, stuff yeah. at 12:30. Well, no, every um, the stuff was taken down and we tend to put up some more put up last night some more we'll put up like during yeah. the morning okay. everybody t- kind of um, takes care of their own yeah, stuff and their own rotations exactly they were there because I got up when I I was told that uh, Trish was wandering around the park and I probably sat sat around waiting for them to actually show up for maybe a good hour they stage in this like Chinese restaurant over on the it's uh, on the, the items that were were Yesterday, it was gone before 24 hours ago. Yeah. And like I said, I, I sat around for like maybe an hour or so when I found out that people had seen her wandering around the park. I think she was walking through and that's what was going on. And so the last of the stuff that had been tagged the day before, with like two loads of stuff, was walked right by her and right by you know, they clearly saw that before they got there, those items had in fact been removed. And like I said, there's video of Santo committing as much. And but his his response was that this is uh, this is an administrative matter with DFM. Well, no, we're we're definitely contesting that. This is not an administrative matter. This is clearly a criminal case. And you know, about the police report. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I thought that. Uh, I, I called the police here. What time did you get assaulted? Uh, yeah. You're telling me an officer walked by you? Yeah. What happened? Uh, pushed his way by me and shoved me into the side of the, uh, uh, metal detector. Yeah. To, to push his way through. You know, and to, to their credit, um, he stood right there for maybe all the 30 seconds before another officer came up and it was like, you need to get in the office back there now. And so he was, he was brought back there. Although, has he been arrested? I, we'll see what happens. Who called the ambulance? Uh, HPD did. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, were you treated? Yeah. What did they do? Uh, they, they checked my calls, um, neck movement, um, uh, they okay. did this, yeah. Um, I told him that I, I didn't need an ambulance, but HPD insisted right. to ascertain how egregious the offense was. Because right. okay. there was definitely different levels of assault. Right. And from my understanding, he's being charged with, and I, I talked to criminal investigators, um, that he is being charged with uh, uh, petty assault. Okay. So, you know, we had it on camera. They definitely had it on camera. Um, they told me a bunch that they caught it. There's like four or five of us here at the time. There was at least four witnesses of like five, five people. Yeah. 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 Sorry, I just don't tend to do interviews anymore. Did, did you get no, the, the, the 36th grade? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, once we get this video segment set up on a uh, stationary and I'll get this I'll get it emailed over to you. Uh, yeah, if you're going for the for the money shot you should really do it inside the metal detector. <laughs> Go pose. Go pose for mainstream media. Come on, everybody. Jump in. <laughs> Early. Thanks, man.
Oh. Okay, so what do we got going on here? Oh, I gotta get this some light. Uh, five hour on live stream heat, too short for me. <laughs> oh yes. Um. Oh, well, Lani says, you know, like thumbs up. She's all for it. She's all like, uh. It's so great to see you standing strong against the BS, the city pool today. So proud of you all. Yeah, thank you very much, Lilani. This is the chat room right on the stream. Yeah, um, I have a I have a social a social line and a chat line, and uh, it's going back and forth. It just depends on what people are using. Some people are using Twitter. Some people are using my Facebook. Some people are using the chat line of this. It, it, yeah, it's. Yeah, it gets weird sometimes trying to take care of it all. <laughs> it, it's technology, or information technology at its best. It's all live. It's right here, right now. <laughs> and then trying to keep things charged. It looks like that uh, Ustream is up their limits, so we're not sure exactly what the limits are, but what I'd love to see is how people are doing everything they can to make sure that every bit of this is being recorded. So uh, we have a few people that are sending it to Occupy Honolulu's Twitter site right now. The links of what they uh, were able to save. So uh, we can uh, put this all in one big group. Yeah, there. that way we can have the whole video or chop it up in segments or whatever we want to do with it. But uh, that way everybody's able to see what's going on and how we're doing it. Uh, but yeah, a lot of a lot of work is coming from uh, three different other. We got a uh, Global Revolution Live. Uh, uh, what is it? We got so many of them. <laughs> oh my! Yeah, see, you can see all the chatting that's going on. It's kind of a killer going back and forth. But we got a uh, Honolulu Doug site. Oh, um, straight from UStream, it has Facebook and Twitter access to. Yeah, yeah, I got everything on this thing. That's and then really we have uh, DisappearNews.com. We have also OWNN, and uh, we also have Occupy P-Town, all of which is uh, doing recordings and restreaming and retweeting everything that we're doing here, so uh, everybody knows what's up. I love that. Yeah, uh, hey, just like uh, Rev says, uh, you stream rocks for that. They sure do. <laughs> Here, let's get out of this man's way so we can uh, do what he needs to do. <laughs> this would be the criminal investigators. <laughs> no problem. Hmm? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we we got a lot going on here. Uh, right now, the discussion is between a three-hour limit or a five-hour limit. It used to be two-hour limit. So we're not sure on what the limit is. All, all we know is that uh, everybody's doing everything they can to make sure everything's uh, recorded. We ourselves are going to have to try and make sure that we stay under two hours and make sure we don't lose anything so we don't have to keep relying on all the help that we are seeing, you know, we got some important stuff going on here. So we still got another 45 minutes before we hit two hours or so. So. Yeah, <laughs> O W N N has been uh, streaming this with the low volume music along with it because it's been so long. <laughs> That's awesome. That is very cool. So, uh, so yeah, it's very cool. 
A lot of solidarity here. Oh, uh, they made the cr criminal investigators and why they're taking pictures of us. Maybe it's for memento occasion. Yeah, that, well, that's the uh, criminal investigators. Yeah. Who you knows? Maybe they just want it for a mischievous means of uh, being able to find us later, or maybe it has something to do with uh, just showing where everybody's at, who's all here for their investigation, or they just want to frame it and say, "Look at what these people think." <laughs> Remember when? <laughs> we were back in 2012, doing freaking occupiers. Oh, that's Lanny <laughs> <Blaming> McJoe. <laughs> freaking occupiers. They just come up in here sitting right in front of our metal detector. Lanny <laughs> McJoe had to come out and, you know, end it. So yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, things didn't go well after that. Yeah, I really love using Ustream here. Ustream uh, encompasses a lot of stuff for people to be able to talk. Yeah, it's cool. for sure. Can't believe how much attention we got. Well, I can't believe it, but <laughs> it's kind of weird, right? We got yeah. it's non showed up. <laughs> Non-stop attention from these PD. <laughs> they all want to see what the hell. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, at Global, uh, there be a Global, uh, global Revolution uh, or Global yeah. Rev blog. Um, uh, when he talked about that song, when we were sitting there talking about that song, somebody was watching you yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I guess he uh, he's decided to start putting uh, played the song on use on the U stream or whatever okay. on the stream itself. So he's got that he had that going, and then um, like I said, they got other people that's doing it. So yeah, people are trying to make it more entertaining for us. <laughs> you don't love us anymore. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong, man? I don't know what. I don't even think it. I don't know whether I can make more of a difference by doing this, or there's those who would say, "Oh, what you need to do is go and and study and become a lawyer or something." Or, or a senator or whatever. Well, see, the point is that you shouldn't have to be that. You you elect, or individuals elect people like that to represent them, the ones that have that kind of knowledge to do that, so you can live the life that you want to live. You, by voting, you're actually electing individuals that are supposed to be representing you, so they can do those kind of activities, so you can live the life that you want. Sacrifice. Well, you know, it's not a sacrifice, it's a choice that they made themselves to say, hey, I want to represent the people and make sure that things are done right within our communities and our states and our country. When the representatives stop listening to the people's voice is where the problem started. Deep in thought, man. You're deep in thought. Yeah, you see, you're getting back in that mode. You need to sit back up in there, man. You're like flying. That radiation was doing you good, man. <laughs> that radiation is the ticket. You're like the incredible hawk in there in words. It's true. It's just hard. I just wish there was someone that really don't want to get yeah, what well, we do, what we have to do, right? I don't know, yeah. I'm trying to make sure that this is not what I have to do. Like, it's just, it's just getting attention, though. Yep. And, uh, and no one else wants to do it. 
Yeah, but there's a lot of people that's uh, watching and a lot of people that's uh, cheering us on and a lot of yeah. people that feel that we're doing a good thing. Yeah, so that means you know, the, the rarest thing is good thing. So the thing that nobody wants to do... Change starts somewhere. Why can't it be right here? Right? So if you go to law school, you got nine years of dealing with school. Does it come out to allow nine years worth of atrocities to happen around you because you want to go to school to try and make things better? Yeah, that's the one way to think about it. Right, instead of just doing something now. Doing what you can now with the tools that you have. Or, this is the other possibility, though, that I get arrested now, and because I'm not anywhere of work, you know, like, I'm not... Because society says these people have these certain things or are like work more, like they have more of a life to give away, I guess, or something. So, you know, let's say if I if I got arrested now, no one might, maybe they would not even talk about it in the news or something, you know, and uh, no one even know this, and it wouldn't make any difference. And then, you know, nine years later, I can't become a lawyer, so who knows? Maybe I would have made that much more of a difference if I was a lawyer and I gave up my life. You know what I mean? Is that whole? That's what's fucked up. Is like the dilemma. Um, well, here, here's here's something that somebody has something to say. The metal detector does not expose you to ionizing radiation, X-rays. Neither do the ones who use individual screening. Metal detectors operate by generating a low-intensity magnetic field that passes from one side of the detector to another. If a metal object passes through the field, there you go. That's the deal. In the metal object. You need to blue magnets to your head, dude. The detector senses the change in the magnetic field are a form of radiation. They're called non-ionizing radiation. Meaning the magnetic fields don't actually generate additional damaging radiation the way like a microwave. Oh, there we go. See, now we have science call. And so Christian Watts are arrested and not suffer health consequences. But uh this is this is what you got. We got one person that just chimed in saying this is an amazing direct action. And then we have the person that's uh helping us with uh global rev to say this is a really great action. Hopefully it'll inspire others to do the same around the world. Thank you. Does that person feel inspired? Or say that? No, we'll see. But it shouldn't be about like we're cold or something. It shouldn't be just about solidarity. I gotta make sure like my reason for being here is not because I want people's fear and respect. You know, like I'm afraid of their scorn. That shouldn't be the reason to be here. I mean, I just want to be convinced that this is the most effective way to make a, a diff, make a, make some noise, you know, make a difference, you know, make, bring awareness. You guys think this is the most effective way? I don't know if this is the most effective way that I've done myself. But what I do know is that all other options have been taken off the table. I have gone down here, I don't know how many times, reporting the death of our items by a question. I don't know how many times I've had to fill out all the work that I've for police brutality or the police allowing civilians who have no authority to steal items from our camp. I've been down here at least 20 times with these same allegations. And it gets to a point where if you're going to blow it off, and especially in this manner, where there is no ambiguity anymore on whether or not uh, those items were in fact removed or changed, we have Officer of the Peace who saw the items being removed. This is not a case of one side accusing the other and there not being any witnesses to it. We clearly have witnesses who are empowered by the city and county of Honolulu to uphold the law. And when you continue to say 
that we have to go through these proper procedures that should have been handled months ago, uh, rather than arrest them for the criminals that they are, you really leave people no other choice than direct action. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can try and arrest Wes the next time I see him. I can try and arrest Kristen at the time. I see it. But the fact of the matter is, is that the officers will be called and I will be arrested because they don't understand what's actually taking place. So the only way now that has been left to us is direct action. We have to take a stand. There is no ambiguity anymore about whether or not Trish and West are committing crimes. None. We have an officer of the peace who admitted that they saw the items being removed. No longer is there any kind of ambiguity. And to be blown off yet again, I still have not spoken with an investigator. I still have not been able to show the footage. If they really took this seriously, they would have taken the police report. They would have taken a verbal statement, and we would have reviewed the footage. And then they would have dispatched squad cars to arrest the criminals that West John and Why don't they take us seriously? Why don't they, why don't they take us... Like, why is it that we can't take this to court? How come we can't, like, hold them Because we home? don't have... All of the other options have been taken off of the table for most. Yeah. They view West and Trish as city employees. You heard it yourself. When the officer, when I questioned him on it, why aren't they being arrested for being petty criminals? And his response was, because they're high-level targets. So, um, I apologize that Carlisle appointed criminals to his administration, but that doesn't change the fact that they are not above the law just because they were appointed by Carlisle. They are not above the law because of who they are. They have a, an obligation to follow the law, and HPD has an obligation to enforce the law. And when both sides, when, when one side chooses to break the law, and the other side is complacent in breaking that law, knowing full well, you know, the officer that, that watched us removing the items, this wasn't a low-level officer. This is Sergeant Santos, who's a community watch leader. This is their boss. He was in charge of HPD's actions. So it's not like it was even a low-level officer. The man who was in charge to make sure that the law was being followed is the one who later on verified on camera that, in fact, the items were removed. They knew what car it was. They knew exactly where it was parked. We planned it that way when we noticed that they were wandering around in the park so that there wasn't any dispute as to whether or not the items were removed. And yet, they still allowed DFM to commit this crime. Well, that in and of itself is indicative of, of how the city and county of Honolulu views private citizens. You're only in, worth as much to the city and county of Honolulu as as big as your bank account is. And we cannot, 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 cannot allow this to continue. And if it takes to allow city employees to steal from you. If that is the case, then what is the point of the police department? What is the point of having uh, these officers around in the first place? Because obviously, either they don't know what their job is, or they don't care enough, or they're too afraid of the consequences of following From their the higher ups. Yeah. yeah. So we have like higher ups that, that are threatening these officers. And unfortunately, they're human beings. They have to make a choice. Mm -hmm. Am I going to follow the law and the oath that, that I took when I became an officer, or am I going to worry about my family and putting food on the table? Yeah. And At Anaheim City Council meeting tonight, someone suggested that the people start their own PD. I would highly suggest that. Because... <laughs> You know, at the end of the day, unfortunately, what happens is <laughs> Can we get belly clubs? the officer has to make a choice. Rubber bullet. And that choice is, do I follow the law 
or do I continue to make a paycheck so that my family is okay? And 99.99999% of the time, the choice that is going to be made is to comply with what the higher-ups are saying so that they continue to make a paycheck. Which is, in the higher-ups, their decisions are dictated by politicians, and politicians are bought. The loyalty will never be to the people as long as the system is how it is, and that's why we are here, and that is why we need to expand at any level that we can, and if we need to start at the bottom level of the fucking left off, then that's what we need to do. One day, I truly believe that we will achieve what we set out to be with Occupy, and we will get corporate money out of politics, and we will get these, these horrendous influences out of our political system, and then we'll have political leaders who make sound decisions, and whose loyalty lies to the people, and that will trickle down to the police department. And then I truly believe that the police department will, will once again serve the people. But until that is fixed, then the police are put in a very bad spot where they have to make a choice. And unfortunately, these aren't robots, these are human beings. And they have to make that choice, and they will always, 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 always make the choice to follow orders, knowing full well that what they did during that day was against the law. I cannot imagine what it must be like to be an officer to go to sleep every night knowing that, I was, that they were given unlawful orders and that they complied. There's a reason why I'm not a cop. It's called a conscience. Because I could, I could not do that. I could not do that. And so this is an opportunity for HPD to show that they will in fact enforce the law. This is clear cut. You cannot get any more clear cut than what took place today. We have sworn officers of the law that saw the action take place illegally, that know full well what our tactics are, and that we do in fact remove all of the items from camp that were tagged the day before and they were replaced with new items. They know this. They have known it for months. And yet they still allow West and Scrape free reign to do whatever the hell they please without impunity. That comes to a stop today. I will not leave. I think this is about a new guy in charge yesterday is flexing the muscles by filling up the camp with all that bullshit equipment, bulldozers, garbage trucks and stuff. It was to show that he has a big, big, big man on campus coming on through. Today was the continuation of that. And so, the, you know, you're absolutely right. And... These orders make orders, well, no mistake. These orders are coming straight from Carlisle. And they're political. And it's political in nature. And it's it's almost laughable. It really is. Because it, it almost seems to me like Wes and Trish are just getting their digs in long enough until Carlisle is uh, thrown out of office. You know, I had a friend tell me the other day that Carlisle probably won't even make it to the primary. He's done for. He's done for. And these are his cabinet level appointed uh, representatives. And from my understanding, nobody outside of Carlisle even likes these people. Because they've shown their true colors time and time and time again. This is about money, this is about power, this is about a whole slew of other things other than justice other than a fair application of the law. Well, I mean, our, our biggest goal, you know, is social economic justice, but what we've been after is making sure Carlisle doesn't stay as the mayor and Tulsi Gabbard doesn't uh, proceed to uh, the United States House of Representatives. Yeah, where she could do more damage to the island. Yeah, where she could do more damage to the island, but to the whole country. Yeah. You know, I mean, these are two individuals that set out of their way to treat people in the manner that they do. Yeah, by the way, if you're local and you are at all interested in participating in political elections and want to help vote these motherfuckers out, then you can do that. 
by voting early at Honolulu Halle up and through Thursday uh, the night. Or you can vote by absentee. Or you can go to your rolling, polling place on Saturday, August 11th. Cool. Make no mistake. Trish and Wes are no better than common criminals. And the only reason they've been allowed to do as much as they have done is because they're Carlisle's the last dog. They were appointed by Carlisle. So, they're last dog. And I honestly think that neither one of them are smart enough to realize how well they're being played. But that's on them. They had a conscious choice today to follow the law. And don't forget, and not only really that, that, but everybody that allowed Bill 54 to pass, everybody for, that voted that, which allows them to, yes, it's about, you know, suppressing political dissent, yada, yada, but it also allows them to criminalize being houseless, or allows them to uh, steal, allows them to uh, ticket, allows them to arrest, all of this bullshit. Because, oh my God, people are going to see that there's houseless well, people and that our system is failing when we have all these empty homes and, and you know, the family that got evicted by the street on May 10th. Elderly couple, they're going to die in the streets. Literally, they are dying in the streets because they have health issues. And, oh my God, we have to go and develop and rent out to military personnel because the government will just hand us free fucking money. And they call us socialists like we're bad and evil because we want things like our taxes to go towards infrastructure and health care and education. But, you know, developers can go ahead and fucking rent out to military personnel, which jacks up the rent prices here on the island. And therefore... A cheap apartment is about a grand for a one bedroom. And then they also (laughs) already have, you know, military personnel already get paid. And then they get their rent for free. And they already have their health benefits. So when they take side jobs, all they need is party money. And so then it lowers the standards of pay rates. So the pay rate here, the minimum wage is what, $7.25? And. Most jobs, or it has, we have the most millionaires as any state, yet we also have the highest amount of minimum wage workers. And that's directly due to the military and the government. And once again, screwing the people over and over and over again for the sake of big business, so that big, badass developers like Bishop of State can go ahead and just fuck everybody and line their fucking pockets. It's all a fucking system designed about money and who gets it, who's creating debt, and who's sucking each other's dick the best. Sorry, I'm not in a very PC frame of mind if y'all have not noticed. I don't like it when police officers brutalize my friends on any kind of level. It kind of pisses me off. I already had to treat that shit out in freaking Chicago. Yes, I know. I know he's rolling his eyes because I'm talking about the police again. I'll fucking shut up. I'll do even better. I'll fucking get away from him. So anyhow. <laughs> well, we've been doing this for some hours now. Sure. We got 104 minutes, so yeah, here soon I'm gonna have to restart this thing. Yep. Yeah. Refuse and resist. I don't know. It's been a while. I've been here for like five hours now. Well, here, I'm gonna take and uh, I'm gonna restart this. I'm gonna let everybody know first. <laughs>